My name is Liam, and I am a sushi chef. I grew up in a mother-son household, but my mother was sick and my family was poor. After graduating from junior high school, I became an apprentice sushi chef. Now I am skilled enough to own my own restaurant. Hum. I knew the sushi here was delicious. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like my cheeks are going to fall off. Ha ha, thanks. I'm glad to hear you both say that. I could come here every day. Oh, thank you for the meal, President Amelia. Well, Olivia, I'll definitely buy you a drink. Thanks, but with food this good, I bet it's always crowded. Yeah, depending on the time, I might have to ask you to wait a little bit. But lately, I've been having problems with some people writing unfairly bad reviews about the restaurant on review sites. Oh no, don't worry about it, the sushi here is really good. Yeah, I'm sure that person just has a weird tongue. It's rather pathetic that he or she can't taste such delicious food honestly. Ha ha ha, thank you. These are Amelia and Olivia, two regulars who come to the restaurant often. They are both nice and funny, and I looked forward to seeing them in the shop. Then one day, a classmate from junior high school came into the store. Welcome. Let's start with the meal I have prepared for you. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, why are you here when I made a reservation at a fancy sushi restaurant? Gary, it's been a while. Thank you for the reservation today. Damn. I wouldn't have made a reservation if I had known that you would be here, that sucks. Ha ha ha. Well, don't say that. This is my classmate Gary, who has looked down on me since junior high school because I am poor. Nothing has changed in his personality since junior high school. I was fed up with him, but I was careful not to show it to his face because he was a customer. Then Gary's mother, who was sitting next to me, opened her mouth and... You are that poor Liam, right? Yes, that's right. Yes, I know. Didn't you graduate from middle school? Can we really eat sushi made by a middle school graduate? That's right. Poor people don't know how expensive food tastes. Are you sure this is a high-end sushi restaurant, or is it a scam? No, no, it's not a scam. I thought I was paying attention to Gary, but his mother, Mary, was also disrespecting me. I was beyond angry and appalled at the way both mother and son humiliated and laughed at me. But Gary's and Mary's mouths never stopped talking after that. This may be out of the question for you but Gary got a job offer at a big company. You had to get a job after middle school, unlike him. Yeah, I'm a genius, unlike that guy. I'm a genius who just needs to learn a few things and soon I'll be a semi-professional. Ha ha. That's Gary. He's always been good at what he does. Well, the sushi you reserved for is ready. Please enjoy it. Gary seemed to have gotten a job offer from a big company and he bragged about it happily. I just listened to him and made sushi then served it to both of them. And then... Do you want some? I don't want the sushi you made. Yeah right, ah ha 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 Sushi bomb. What? Oh my oh my. Hey! You got it all wrong, don't you? Did you think I would eat sushi made by a middle school graduate like you? I knew you wouldn't eat sushi made by a bottom feeder. Oh, and of course I'm paying for it for free, because you're serving me something I can't eat. What? What the hell is that? Whoa! I didn't do anything wrong, okay? It's your own fault for owning a restaurant and making sushi in the first place. You're a motherless family, your mother is sick, you're on welfare. You're at the bottom of the barrel. That's got nothing to do with anything. You're just trying to make me feel bad about the food. Why are you doing this? You're overreacting. You want me to apologize? When you made the sushi, it was made by a middle school graduate. Why would I, a brilliant guy, eat a middle school graduate's sushi? What the hell is that? That is crazy. What? Don't talk about common sense like that. Hey, don't yell at me because it bothers other customers. Shut up. 
I'm a high-spec genius, okay? It doesn't matter how much you bother the low-level customers in this store. I'm not going to eat any sushi you make anyway. Then Gary stomped on the sushi and laughed with Mary. My eyes began to flicker with anger at the impossible things he was saying and doing. Then someone sitting next to Gary opened his mouth, and... You were making a lot of noise earlier, can you please be quiet? Yes, I wish you'd at least think about disturbing the customers around you. Ha! Huh? President Amelia and her secretary Olivia. What, you were sitting next to us all this time? I mean, why are you here? They're two of our regulars, it's just that they were also in the shop today. It's none of your business. Because it's my private business to begin with. Olivia, cancel his job offer. Okay, I'll make sure he won't get the job. What? No way. What did you just say? Nah, they're withdrawing the job offer. Oh. Don't tell me you got a job at Sir Seuss Fighting Company. The president was sitting next to you and you didn't even notice? I was deep in conversation. How could I have noticed? I don't know, but I think President Amelia has an enormous presence. The aura was coming out of her. Don't compliment me like that. Hey, Olivia, call him already, the sooner the better. Okay, excuse me. When Amelia said this, Olivia got up and went to call someone. And a few minutes later. Wow! I really did get a call that my offer was rescinded. My bright future is being ruined by such a call. Wait a minute, Ms. President. This is too much. Are you seriously going to rescind Gary's job offer? Of course, don't you remember what you just did? But it's not a formal rescission yet, it's just a recommendation. No, 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 it's practically a withdrawal of the offer. How can you rescind a job offer like that? I just had a little argument with a classmate, this can't be happening. What? Impossible? Are you seriously saying that? You know, right? We're in the restaurant business for a living. You can't call this a fight between friends. Damn! But that's still too much. I can't believe I'm looking for a job again. Oh, I remember the days of interview practice, I'm Gary, the more I chew the better I taste. Damn! Coming to a restaurant with a bottom feeder who just finished middle school just made things worse. As Gary, unable to accept the withdrawal of his job offer, swears somewhat deliriously. Olivia seemed to notice something. Lately, it seems that there are people who write unfairly bad reviews about this restaurant on word-of-mouth websites. Maybe it's you? Don't tell me it's really you who did this. No! That's an accusation. Don't make assumptions without evidence. By the way, you can ask your lawyer to disclose information about such posts. Then we can identify the culprit who deliberately wrote a bad review. If they are identified, they will probably claim damages because what you wrote was a bunch of lies. On the contrary, it could even be a criminal case. I see, so it's up to me. Okay, I'll talk to a lawyer tomorrow. Hey, wait a minute Liam, you don't have to go to a lawyer. Hey, what's the problem? You have nothing to do with it, right? Oh no, no. I had nothing to do with it. But look, lawyers cost a lot of money and you have to open the shop tomorrow, right? You're worried about the store, thank you. But don't worry, I have good people working for me. I'll do the stocking, but after that, it shouldn't be a problem for a day or so. Gary realizes that I really need to talk to a lawyer. All right, I give up. Oh yeah, I'm the one who wrote it down. I'm the one who wrote the stupid sea urchins here really taste like horse manure or something like that. That's what I was wondering. How does this guy know what horse manure tastes like? And anyway, that's it. I confessed, so don't make any more noise about it. Yes, he did. He's sorry for what he did. You doesn't need a lawyer like that. Oh no, I'm going. I'm going to consult. Don't be ridiculous.
I'm the one who did it. And I won't do it again. So why are you going to all this trouble to ask for help? Look at him. You really have a human heart to go to a lawyer for advice. Hey, come on, you guys. You're making a lot of noise, you know that. You haven't said a single word of remorse, so what's the remorse? No matter what you say now, nothing will change the current situation. Nah, what's with the yelling? Don't think that just because you're a big shot you can lose your temper everywhere. Well, then I'll sue you. I will not let you get away with this. I'm going to expose your real name and spread the word on social media that you are the worst company ever. You know what I'm talking about. For some reason, Gary suddenly begins to say that he will sue Amelia, and Amelia stares at him with half-open eyes. Gary is rattled and shaking, but doesn't seem to want to take back his words. Then Ms. Olivia, who has been on the phone for some time. Ha! Huh. You haven't learned your lesson at all. Ha! Huh. What's with you all of a sudden? What do you mean I haven't learned my lesson? I've never been confronted with such a horrible person. It's not like that. Hey, you know what I mean, don't you? In this short time, one of our employees has done a lot of research into your past. You had a criminal record. What? You have a criminal record? I heard you were sued by several people after repeatedly defaming them on social media. And he was even sentenced to probation, right? So I don't know why you're doing something similar again. Uh, shut up. This is like my life's work. It's not like I can just stop. To make this your life's work, you have good taste, my friend. Look. This is, you know, a good reason to turn down a job offer. If you still want to sue me, go ahead. Oh, and just so you know, rescinding the job offer has nothing to do with me. I'm going to sue you for damages over here, so please pay up. Nah. Wait a minute. I could have my job offer revoked. If you're my friend, I'll let you get away with it. I guess a friend for you is someone who is good for you. By the way, I don't consider you a friend so don't come back to this store ever again. Also, I don't think the job offer could be rescinded, but I think it is rescinded. Well, in the unlikely event that it is rescinded, I doubt it will be overturned. Also, you should know that you won't be able to go into any of the stores around here anymore. Even the stores around here? Gary defended himself vigorously, but when he learned that he would not be able to enter the stores in the area again. Well, wait. That's not good. Why can't we go to the stores around here? Well, yes. The shops around here have nothing to do with what you just said. It's a big ant, remember? My company is in the restaurant business for a living. We have a direct relationship with the stores around here. Of course we're going to alert people who are going to reduce the restaurant's profits through unwarranted word of mouth. What the hell is this? Are you saying this whole area is your territory? It's not exactly a territory, but that's the way it's always been with me. We meet, say hello, work hard as rivals. But when someone is in trouble, we all help each other, that's how our company has grown. I can't believe you don't know that. I don't know why we hired you. Don't make fun of Gary. Gary is a great boy who can do anything. I don't want you to say whatever you want about Gary. You don't even know him well enough. Well, thank you, Mom. Well, he was suspected of being a bully in middle school. If that something includes crime, then you're the kind of person we don't want in our house. I understand. I will accept your offer. Gary. Just let me go to the stores around here. There are some stores that are very important to me, filled with memories of my mother. Whoa! Please do the same for me! Please! A store of memories, hey! Can you imagine what would happen if false rumors were spread about that store? Uh. Well, that's... 
And yet you have no qualms about writing bad reviews about other stores that don't even exist. Selfish and spiteful. You don't even know when or if a store will become a target. I'm still going to warn them. Now it's up to the people in that store. Oh no. The place that me and my mom have fond memories of. Gary. Don't worry, we'll make new memories again. So Gary and his mother Mary, toweled out of the store. Later, Gary received a formal notice from the company that his job offer had been rescinded. Amelia then proceeded to inform all the stores in the area about Gary. They were banned from most of the stores in the area, but only the one that Gary said he remembered. However, the only store that Gary had mentioned was the store of his memory, which had not banned him for a while, probably because of the good attitude of both of them. Then later, after serving the food as ordered to Gary and Mary, who came to the restaurant with trepidation, I told them not to come back, mentioning the incident, and they left in tears. Gary was shocked by this and was unable to find a job. He got interview after interview only to get a prayer mail. He ended up working as a temp for a temp agency that was always looking for workers. Gary, who was very proud, could not accept this fact and became depressed every day. Mary, who was worried about Gary's depression but could not do anything about it, became more and more depressed. So Gary and Mary had to spend their days in a dark mood. And as for me, Welcome. What can I get for you? Oh, sir. What do you recommend today? Today, I recommend the conger eel. Shall I make it for you? Great, I'll take that. Oh, I'll have the tuna, please. Hey, Olivia, you were acting so weird just now. You two were getting along so well. That's the thing, Amelia, you've been coming every day since. It's my policy to do what I say, by the way, this is my special seat. Ho, oh, you've really been coming here every day, is your money okay? Actually, it's a little bad, but I want to keep my policy, I can't afford to lose it. Um, you don't have to force yourself to go that far. Please don't touch the company's money, okay? Olivia, I wouldn't go that far either. I'd rather throw away the policy than break the law. Well, from now on, make it once every two days. In return, please bring me more often. I can't believe you came here every day and left me behind, don't you miss me? Okay, Olivia. Let's come here every other day to eat. I'll buy you everything. So don't look so sad. President Amelia! Thank you! Hey, looks like we're back to square one with the money. After a while, a lot of customers started coming to the shop. I was busier than ever. Amelia came to the store every day to keep an eye on me. I felt happy to be blessed with kind regular customers. She came with Olivia that day and we talked about how we would both come next time. They are very close and I always looked forward to them coming to eat with us. So I am happy that they are coming, but I am worried about Amelia's financial situation. I am grateful to the regulars who come to the restaurant despite their tight budgets, and I will continue to make sushi today. 